scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Yes, I am indeed totally out of sync. If I'm right, you've probably had Night of the Doctor and Day of the Doctor from me. But I have got completely sidetracked. You see, I've not discussed an adventure in time and space. I've not discussed those ridiculous BBC Three things. Has anyone seen those? Voting for the best monsters? The host of that is actually the same host of the Doctor Who After Party. Now, if anyone saw the Doctor after party, it was the man with the beard standing next to Zoe Ball. The man with the beard standing next to Zoe Ball is perhaps the single most annoying aspect of the entire 50th anniversary. He is indeed an utter... His delivery is condescending, pointless, thoughtless, and frankly nasty to the fans. If he's meant to be an exciting youth TV presenter, well, that's not how he's coming across. He's coming across as simply annoying. He has no redeeming features whatsoever. This is a man who shouldn't be allowed near a television set, never mind near some Doctor Who fans. He is charmless, arrogant, pointless, and to be honest, just plain annoying. He's the sort of person who's surprised to discover that Daleks can go upstairs. He's the sort of person who's thinking of the next humorous comeback or quip, rather than actually listening to the answers provided by any of the celebrities. This man should not be allowed near television. This man should not be allowed near Doctor Who. This man should not be allowed. I feel quite passionately about this, on the grounds that I actually feel quite passionately about Doctor Who. Please don't let this man do anything like this again. I've now got that out of my system and can now talk about something that was basically heartwarming, basically gorgeous, basically wonderful. Because Adventures in Space and Time, as you can probably guess, I did not get to see at the BFI. I did not get an advance copy of. But what I did get... Well, was something lovely on the telly. For those of you who don't know, The Adventures in Space and Time was basically a drama documentary trying to recapture the early days of Doctor Who. Now, it surprised me how emotionally attached I got throughout this programme. Mark Gatiss's writing was more subtle here than it's been in the past. It had considerably more charm than I've ever experienced from him. I've experienced quite a lot. The only thing that threw me was Rhys Shearsmith. And I think that's more to do with the fact that I had no idea who else they could get to cover, well, the second Doctor. There's nobody really out there who looks like... But Reese felt wrong. Now, Reese can act. Reese is very good. Adventures in Space and Time opens, well, at the end. The end of the first Doctor's time. But this is not about Doctor Who. This is about the making of a TV programme. The road to Coronation Street, about how Tony Warren created Coronation Street and how the episodes came to pass, was a glorious piece of television. This was even better. You see, we've always known the facts. The stuff about Bunny Webber and Sidney Newman's decisions and Raymond Cusack and Delia Derbyshire. We've known all of these facts, but we've never had the, the heart, the actual human stories. Now, yes, we know this is drama, and we know the sort of thing that was going on. But here it's all put into context. Someone who'd become disenfranchised, who'd become stereotype typecast, fought and fights against everything, and becomes more like the character he's playing, which allows him to have one last flurry, one flourish of a career. Bill was practically the same age as Peter Capaldi is now, but he was playing it considerably older. And he wasn't the most well man going. But enough of me prattling on about it. The DVD itself is due out on the 2nd of December. Yes, it can be argued that there are, well, you know, a really nice amount of cameos. And you can't please everyone all the time. Now, Matt Smith's inclusion. Did it distract? Did it detract? Did it make you go, you are? For me, yeah. Because I was so caught up in the moment, in the reality of... Well, Hartnell's decline. Genuinely feeling for the man. 
that I, well, didn't like seeing Matt Smith. It made sense, and I could see why it was done, but it made the whole thing feel more, less, I don't know, fictional, I guess. Now, on the DVD, there's also a couple of extras that, well, could be worth getting it for. Because, yes, you get to see the first Doctor regenerate into the second Doctor, but on the DVD, you get to see the second Doctor, played by one of the League of Gentlemen, regenerate into the third Doctor, played by one of the League of Gentlemen. Yes, you heard that correctly. It's only a couple of seconds on the making of documentary, but it's well worth grabbing. And let's read from the press release. This special one-off drama travels back in time to 1963 to see how the beloved Doctor Who was first brought to our screen. Actor William Hartnell felt trapped by a succession of hard man roles. Wannabe producer Verity Lambert was frustrated by the TV industry's glass ceiling. Both of them were to find unlikely hope and unexpected challenges in the form of Saturday tea time drama, time travel and monsters. Allied with a team of brilliant people, they went on to create the longest running science fiction series ever, now celebrating its 50th anniversary. An Adventure in Space and Time was written by Mark Gatiss, executive producer Mark Gatiss, Stephen Moffat and Carolyn Skinner, who directed by Terry McDonough. David Bradley, open brackets, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Broadchurch, oh yeah, and Doctor Who, close brackets, plays the lead role of William Hartnell, while Jessica Rain, Call the Midwife, The Woman in Black, and Doctor Who, co-stars the first producer of Doctor Who, Verity Lambert. The stellar cast is joined by Sasha Darwin, Waris Hussein, how good was he? Leslie Manville, Heather Hartnell, and Brian Cox, open brackets, Sidney Newman. DVD features include... The leaflet featuring the programme images and exclusive foreword by writer and executive producer Mark Gatiss. I don't have that, I only have the press release. William Hartnell, the original. Now that was the five minute documentary that was shown immediately afterwards on the TV. A making of the adventure in space and time. Now this is narrated by Carol Ann Ford. That's pretty good. But one of the things that we all want, apart from the deleted scenes of course, which are exceptionally short is the reconstructions, scenes from an unearthly child, the pilot, put together in order to be shown black and white in 3x4 format so that you could compare. Now, obviously, they're nowhere near as good, but we do have the festive greeting, the farewell to Susan, the regeneration, and, of course, the unearthly child pilot. They're all brilliant. There's the title sequences, which is a bit odd because you know what the first Doctor's title sequence looks like and you've already watched the title sequence in this because you've seen it. So this, well, this is frankly brilliant. The DVD, worth buying? Of course it is. And of course, where would you put it on the shelf? I suggest next to Lost in Time, but that's just me. Right, I'm going to go now and come back very shortly and probably talk about, I don't know, a Doctor Who DVD or or perhaps something else. Either way, be seeing you. Have you ever thought what it's like to be wanderers in the fourth dimension? Have you? The exiles? I'm not a human being. I'm a time lord. I walk in eternity. Our lives are different to anybody else's. Would it be unreasonable to ask you to let us have a look inside? Take a look. There we are. Well, what do you think? You're deliberately choosing to go on the run from your own people in a rackety old TARDIS. Why not? After all, that's how it all started. So, all of time and space, where do you want to start? Hello there. Doctor, you're being child. Well, of course I am. There's no point in being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes. The ground beneath our feet is spinning at a thousand miles an hour, and I can feel it. You were never alone. All those bright and shining companions. Till we meet again, Sarah. Don't be too far away, will you? And if you do, come back and see us sometimes. The Doctor in the TARDIS. Next stop everywhere. There are some corners of the universe which have read the most terrible things. They must be fought. The man who keeps running. Never looking back because he dare not have to shame. Don't turn your back. Don't look away. And don't blink. The 
there's something you better understand about me. I am definitely a madman with a box. Courage isn't just a matter of not being frightened, you know. It's being afraid and doing what you have to do anyway. He has saved your lives so many times and you never even knew he was there. It all started out as a mild curiosity in the junkyard. Now it's turned out to be quite a great spirit of adventure, don't you think? You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who is the property of the BBC and no infringement is intended. To contact the show or to find out more about Hoostrology and my other works, click on the links on the Tin Dog Podcast homepage. Why not follow Blue Box Messiah, or one word, on Twitter to keep up to date with tour dates of my forthcoming Doctor Who comedy play. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. It's the 50th anniversary. Last year, you promised yourself you'd get a copy of Hoostrology. You know, for yourself, for that bookcase. You dropped hints to your loved ones. You wrote letters to Santa. You even promised yourself you'd buy yourself a copy to celebrate finishing off all that annoying Christmas shopping. But it never arrived. So this year, why not give in and buy one of the funniest books you'll ever read? Annoy your family by chortling away at jokes that only you and a handful of other Doctor Who fans will get. Hoostrology, it's the future. Stop hanging around waiting for the ebook to come out. There won't be an ebook. There won't be an app. Buy it today while stocks last. Click on the link on the Tin Dog Podcast homepage or visit any branch of Amazon. You know you want to. <laughs> <laughs>